1995 Subaru Legacy with a 2.2 and it is a no spark, no start. And what we're going to do first is we're going to check for spark using a test light. Okay, this is a way spark design. There's two different coils. This is coil number one, coil number two. And what we want to do is we want to check for spark on, on each one individually. Okay, go ahead and crank it. Good. No spark from that coil. Check the other coil. Crank it. Good. No spark from that coil. With no spark from either coil on this side, there's no reason to check the other side because they're way spark and each one of them not firing indicates the coil is not firing at all. I don't need to check this side. So the next thing is going to be, we're going to check for control. Coil negative control. And the way this is set up, we have one power feed, that's yellow wire in the middle, and two controls, the red and the blue, are the coil negative. Those get controlled by an igniter, and the igniter is up here. That same red and blue wires you see on the bottom of the igniter is the same red and blue wires we have up here at the coil. So we'll check it up here first. Okay, first thing is I'm checking the feed voltage to the coil using my test light on the yellow wire. Crank it. Okay. Should be a nice steady light and it shouldn't go out. That's a good feed. The next thing we want to do is we want to check the controls. Okay, so I moved the test light to the red control wire that's coil negative control. And what we should see is a flicker in this test light if there is coil negative control. Cr uh, crank it. Okay. The fact that it looks like the feed, no flicker at all, tells us there is no coil negative control. So we're going to check the blue wire, same thing. Okay, this is coil negative on the opposite coil. This is the blue control wire. Again, we want to see a flicker. Crank it. Good. Okay. No flicker, no control. That means there's there's no coil negative control on either coil, and that means that this car does not need a coil. Uh, there would be no reason to put a coil in this. What we need to address is why there's no negative control. So at this point, we want to focus up here to the igniter, and we're going to do the same tests on the igniter on that blue and red wire. Okay, move the test light up to the red control wire on the igniter this is coil negative control and the light should be lit right now that's telling us that the coil winding is intact and that we have no opens in between the coil and the igniter so that's a good circuit crank it okay and again no flicker no control what we're addressing right now is that we have a good harness between the coil and the igniter so i'm going to go up to the blue wire now same thing you want your test light to light and you want to crank it. Go ahead. Good. No control, no flicker. Again, so what we've addressed in this test is that the wiring integrity between the igniter and the coil is good. Now we got to move on. Okay, staying with the test light, uh, I am now connected to the igniter ground, and that would be, and that would make sense that the test light is not lit connected to ground. So what I'm going to do is move my test light polarity to battery positive. And when I connect the battery positive, my light should light. And as you can see it lit, not good enough of a test for me. I want a loaded circuit test. So I'm going to crank it, go ahead and crank it. Good. That is a good igniter ground. That light stayed lit, connected to battery positive. Well, now we need to address the computer to igniter control signals and make sure the computer's sending a signal. Okay, as far as testing these computer control signals to the igniter, you can't use a test light because they're low voltage signals. I only have one showing that way just to illustrate that you're not gonna see anything. Go ahead and crank it. Okay, good. There's nothing on that light. This is not the proper way to check these. Again, these are low voltage signals. You need to have a scope or something similar, a voltmeter maybe, to read these signals. So I'm gonna show that with a scope and a voltmeter. All right, before I show this test, our issue here that we're trying to address is with no coil negative control, do we have a bad igniter? 
or do we have the computer not sending the igniter the proper signals? If that's the case, if there's no signal on this test, then we go toward a crank sensor input problem and toward the computer. And what we're doing right now is trying to avoid that and we're gonna check the igniter control, PCM to igniter control, we're looking for a pulse. So I am T-pinned on one of the top two yellow wires, which is the igniter circuits. There's two different ones, I'm gonna check them both. Okay, looking at my, looking at my screen, go ahead and crank it. Okay, good. You saw the pulse, and what that pulse tells you is the computer is in fact receiving a crank signal, and there's no reason to go toward the computer, no reason to check the crank signal. This igniter is getting what it needs to turn on these transistors to fire these coils. That's not happening. This is a bad igniter. I'm gonna go to the next one and show you the next one. All right, so I moved the T-pin to the other igniter control wire, PCM to igniter control wire. There should be a pulse on this one too. Crank it. Ah. Hold on, I don't think my T-pin's in all the way. Definitely something to consider when you're doing this kind of testing. Always check yourself. And let's retry that again, go ahead. Good. So you see the pulse on both igniter control signals. So what that means, uh, the computer's receiving cam crank inputs, what it needs, it's sending the igniter the signal it needs to be turning these coils on and it's not. So again, what we have is a bad igniter. I'm gonna show you what this would look like if all you have was a voltmeter. So I'm gonna go to my digital mode here. And this is what the igniter signal would look like. Let me reset my min-max scales. Ignore my min-max scales, you use a regular multimeter, you're not going to have this kind of sensitivity. What you want to look at would be the top one right here. Go ahead and crank it. Alright, good. So you saw like an average of 2 volts, so at least that tells you you had activity there. And if you had a regular multimeter, you could in fact measure those top two wires. Crank it over one more time, let's look at it again. good so around two and a half volts during cranking that would tell you you had this square wave that was taking place there so you can in fact do that with a regular multimeter there's one last thing to address when you have a system like this and you have no coil negative control and there's a flat line steady voltage the test lights not flickering there is a possibility that both coils could be shorted unlikely that two coils would sort at the same time however you want to make sure before you put an igniter in this that there's no current flow here. A shorted primary would cause the igniter to go into a current limit mode and it would look like there's no control with the test light when in fact there really is. So the last test to be 100%, I want to measure amperage on this coil and make sure in fact there is no control and then we'll confidently put an igniter in this. Okay, last test. I have my amp probe connected to the feed wire. And what this will read is both coils, if they're firing, I will read amperage on this middle yellow wire. Set on a 20 amp scale, 100 millivolts is one amp. So I'm, I'm set my scope up to a zero to one volt screen, which would be zero to 10, 10 amps. And we're looking at our number down here. Go ahead and crank it. Okay, good. We have no pulse, no control, no amperage on this coil. So our steady test light was true. There is no control. Our coils are fine. Our ignition input wires from the computer to the igniter are good. Igniter ground is good. Control wires between the coil and igniter are good. This needs an igniter. Okay, here's the, the after shot for all you naysayers. Got a new igniter installed. And uh, go ahead and see if it starts. There she is. Good. So uh, obviously we got good spark now, the car runs. Bad igniter. And what I wanna do now is I'm going to show, um, I'm gonna disable the injectors to simulate a no start and I'm going to show you what these control signals look like that we were looking at before using the test light to see what control actually looks like. And um, 
I'll throw the scope in there too so you see what what we'd be looking at on a waveform as far as control goes at the coil redoing our control tests okay this is redoing the test light I'm on the feed wire to the coils and you want to crank it over we should have a steady light here go ahead crank it okay got a little, little bit of a fluctuation in that light that's just from starter current and what you want to do is compare that to the two control circuits on the red and okay I'm on the red and green control wire to the coil this would be coil negative control go ahead and crank it Good. notice the flicker in the test light indicating control of this coil that's what we were looking for in the first place so we do have coil negative control on that top wire we're gonna move the test light to the bottom blue control wire now Okay, on the blue control wire key is on normal for the light to be lit go ahead and crank it okay good got control on the blue wire as noted by the pulsing of the test light so if you have a coil that has no spark and you have good control as indicated by the test light what that tells you is you have a bad coil if you have a coil that has no spark and you have no control at the coil using the test light that tells you to move away from the coil as the cause and move toward what's controlling the coil in this case we had an igniter problem and again one more time there is a variable to this test it's not 100 percent if you have sorted primary windings that test light is not going to blink even though there's control there and it has to do with the current limiting effect that's taking place in the igniter so you want to be careful of that which is why i showed the amp probe reading earlier and uh, one final test will be, I'm going to show you what the scope looks like with coil negative control using actually just a, a graphing multimeter I'm just going to use. And uh, I'm going to show you what control looks like using something different than the test light. All right, I'm on the coil battery feed voltage wire just to show you that. And I'm reading 11.4 volts. This battery's weak to begin with. Uh, go ahead and crank it. Okay, good. And you saw a drop in voltage from starter current. I'm on a five second screen. I'm using a graphing multimeter. I'm not looking for detail here, just looking at the signal. And I'm gonna move this over to one of the control wires. I'm just gonna show you one. I'm on the top red control wire. And we wanna see the same kind of voltage with the key on, battery voltage indicating good primary winding integrity. Uh, go ahead and crank it. We're looking for spikes. Okay, good. Battery's about dead, but you see the spikes on the on the screen tell you you have coil negative control, and that's it. That's what we were looking for on the test light. Again, we're not looking for any kind of major detail here. This is just control circuit testing. Do we have control of the coil or don't we? And that's what we were doing. And one more time, we had a bad igniter.